So in discussing the five server roles, logically the first one we would discuss is the mailbox role. And that's because many would see this as the most important role of all. This is where your mail is held. So what does the mailbox role do? Well, it hosts your mailbox databases as well as your public folder databases. So it provides MAPI access to Outlook clients. Now ordinarily you can install the mailbox role with other roles on a single server. You can install it with the hub transport role or the client access server role or the unified messaging server role and you can mix and match those as you choose. This is true with the exception of the edge transport server role which is installed alone separately on the perimeter network. However, if you install a clustered active or passive mailbox server, then you cannot have it coexist with any other role. The next server role is the client access server. This role is similar to the front end server for Exchange 2000 or 2003, and it provides connections to your mailboxes through a variety of different methods. You might use Outlook Web Access to connect through a browser. You might use ActiveSync for your mobile device. Outlook Anywhere allows you to use Outlook to connect to your mail at work without actually going through a VPN. You have POP and you have IMAP support as well through the client access server role. It also provides your free busy data through the availability service and it supports the auto discover services. Next up is the hub transport server. This server will route your mail within your exchange organization and it's similar to the bridgehead server that you might have installed and worked with in exchange 2000 or 2003. Now you can also configure it to route external mail so you don't necessarily have to use an edge transport server although it's recommended but all mail coming in and out of your organization will go through the hub transport role. So this means you can establish transport rules, which we'll discuss in future lessons, to allow you to control the mail while it is in transit. It relies completely on Active Directory to have a logical infrastructure in place using site and site link information from Active Directory to route internal messages. Now we keep mentioning the Edge Transport Server role. You recall that we mentioned in a previous lesson that it sits in the perimeter of your network. It's not part of the Active Directory and it cannot be installed with any other role but it resides on the perimeter using Active Directory application mode Atom that's if you're using a server running server 2003 or Active Directory lightweight directory services if you have a server running server 2008 the edge servers will synchronize with hub transport servers on the internal network its purpose is to provide additional security like antivirus and anti-spam to your messaging organization so you can see that while it's not required, it's certainly recommended that you use an edge transport server role when possible. And then we have the unified messaging server role. This provides voice over IP with your mailbox. So you have a universal inbox that allows email, voicemail, and incoming faxes to all come into one inbox. And then with Outlook Voice Access, you can check messages in your calendar through multiple access interfaces, like the phone, email or a web browser. You can also configure single or multiple auto attendance thanks to the unified messaging servers integration with speech services. You can see here in the diagram it's a little bit complicated and it includes a great deal of telephony infrastructure. You see PBXs, voice over IP gateways and so forth. For all of this to work you will most likely need a telephony expert for the installation and configuration of your infrastructure or perhaps the reconfiguration of your existing infrastructure. And that's okay. You're an exchange guru. There's no reason for you to be a telephony expert at the same time. So by all means, reach out for assistance so that you can have the underlying infrastructure configured properly, and then you can focus on the unified messaging aspect, the software side to things. And so this should provide a basic overview of each role. However, as we go forward, you will dive more deeply into the individual configuration aspects of the roles we just described. But first, there are still some introductory subjects we will cover in future lessons.